G'day, how you going? Ian Apples here from Australia, your acrylic guru. Welcome to my video. This video I'm going to do a bit of explaining on brushes, mediums and different paints and how they can work for you. I get a lot of questions about different issues and this video I want to try and tackle those questions so you will understand a lot more what you've been asking, what I use it for, how it works for me and how it can work for you all right. So come over here, we're not painting today but it's all right, it's all right because I'm going to show you some interesting stuff anyway and um, first I want to get on about the paints. People are asking me what is flow white, can I just get normal paint and mix water with it to thin it down or whatever. I call it flow white, but in your country you might have different um, names for it, student paint, craft paint. Um, I'm going to just show you what I use, and what I do use, you can buy it online, okay? So get over here, now. First I want to tackle Retarder. Retarder is a product, a medium, that slows down the drying time of acrylic paints. All right, now there's so many different brands. These are just a couple I can get in Australia. This is a white one. It looks like a white, um, as you can see on my hand there. I've never used this one yet, but it's there and I'll give it a go one day. But I've been sticking, that's that one there. And it's made by Mont Morte. All right, I'll get that off my glove. Now there's also Global. I've been, I haven't used it yet, but I've got it in the arsenal ready to rock and roll. It's, they're all the same. Uh, there's Atelier Tilia and there's the Josonges, okay, Hosonges. Um, now they say, how much do you use? Um, I use a lot when I'm preparing my canvas, but if anything, you want to use about 10%. I'll show you what I mean by that. So here is the global student paint that I use, and it's just called a, a student acrylic impasto, but it's white paint. Now I call it flow because it flows, I'll just use the old bottle here, it flows out of the bottle. Look, watch, it'll flow, it's flowing, it's soft, okay? That's why I call it flow white, it's just easy to word. Now there's me amount of paint, okay? so. You're not in a hurry, or you're not doing like I'm filming here, you're just painting at home. So if you want to retard that, probably... Can you see that puddle there of clear retarder? It's, it's if anything, it's 10% volume of this much paint. And then you can mix that together. And that is what wets my canvas, ready to put a sky and blendable clouds in, okay? and it makes the paints blend like oil paints. The oil artists use magic white, they call it magic white, so I suppose if I want, I can call this my magic white. Now I'll show you the difference between the what I call flow white and the normal titanium white out of the tube. This is the normal titanium white, this is a series one. Paints have different series. Now this is not flow, look at it coming out of there, it's like, toothpaste it's it's like a paste come on out you come oh come on it's not that hard there we go see that did not flow out all right just a hint here's a quick little tip as well I don't know why I don't do it enough but when you're putting your paint from a tube onto your palette don't just ooze it all out and be done with it because you get messes in your lids like I get here a lot if you get it out Get your tube and just cut it, and you're wiping the tube nozzle clean. Just a quick little tip that, something you might want to remember. Now that's me normal white paint. That's the flow white, craft paint, student paint, or your magic white. And that's white paint there, that's the difference. Now, in another brand, they've got structured paint. And they've got flow paint. This is the same colour paint, yellow green, okay? Australian yellow green or just yellow green. Now in the tubes of Matisse, they've got clearly written over there, flow, meaning that's going to flow like that white paint. But it doesn't mean it's a cheap quality paint like that one. Matisse is a good brand of paints. And this one is the same colour, the same brand, but it says structured. Meaning, let's open this flip top cap on this one. Meaning... This is very thick 
Okay, now get this to the end of the tube and this one, get out, same paint, it's nearly empty. Oh, see it comes out like water, bubbles out even. That's, that's flowing paint, all right? That's the difference. Now, I'll wiggle them. That's, I can structure that up if I really wanted to. That's thick, you can see that. This one is like flowing, liquid, soft, wetter, okay? Now I get asked a lot of questions, so in this video I'm trying to answer a few of those and tell you some other things that you can probably do with knowing as well. Someone's been asking, and quite a few people have been asking, can you use retarder as a thinner? It'll, it'll loosen your paint and thinning it up, but so long as you realise it's going to keep that paint wet for longer. You can always damp your brush in some water and pick up some of your paint. Say like I want to thin that. I'll dampen this brush in water. So just dampen it, wipe it off. Then you can pull your paint out and thin that bit down. Not too much though. You don't want to, if you, if you thin it with too much water, there we go, we've got our beautiful yellow green. Now watch, I'm gonna bomb that paintbrush up with water and thin it down. It'll probably turn like um, um, water paints, whatever you call them. Now look at this, I put too much water. It's very weak and opaque. If that was on a canvas, you'll see through it. So don't use water as a thinner to thin it down to buggery unless you want it to go opaque or it might get that opaque look. So you can use retarder as a thinner so long as you don't overdo it because it'll make your paint opaque and so long as you realize it's going to stay wet longer you can water your paint down by dipping your paintbrush in the water and that'll help any thicker paints transfer from your brush onto the canvas all righty it's not too hard is it it's just remembering these things and the more you do art the more you learn all right and it's always important to practice a lot of procedures as well there's a difference between acrylic paints and oil paints okay i'm going to do an example here now a normal acrylic paint is thick and structured the average is say like for artists medium paints they've got different mediums in it to make them structured or flowing or soft but in general you can paint Say like you get an aqua enamel, a water-based enamel paint to, and it's acrylic though, but it's trying to get that shiny look like an oil paint on your, your doorways and your house. When you paint it, over here, if anything, microscopically, you're left with brush scratch marks in your paint, okay? Like, you'll see it. And with the oil, when you, when you brush an oil onto, say, like a skirting board or an architrave, it'll sit down and flow. All right, now with acrylics, there is an additive you can get. It's like a um, it's like a flow control, a flow troll over here we call it. But it's an additive you add into it. Okay, that's the acrylic there, and that's the oil. When you add it into the paint, of the approx you'll have to read the can wherever you buy it from and mix the approximate amount into your acrylic paint. And when you paint it on, instead of it being dry and like that, it'll, it'll relax it. It controls the flow of the paint. If anything, it's relaxing it like an oil. All right, now a lot of other questions and comments I get, people send me the work and they go, I've just did your tutorial or I've seen people posting up uh, I've just done a Ian Harris tutorial or someone else or someone else uh, I gave it a go I had trouble with the clouds I had trouble with this it turned out like crap or they had trouble fair enough if you're a beginner you're gonna have trouble but if anything you need to practice and when a person is putting stuff up saying yeah but I had trouble that's telling me um, you're a bit too eager to get onto the canvas and do a full-blown painting and you're not really practicing now with practicing You don't just practice. There's, there's a few things you have to learn about practicing. Okay, so I want to tell you that as well Soak all this up and some of it You might think ah, oh, it's garbage. I don't need it But there might be the odd thing you might think hang on a minute that boys onto something there 
All right, so come a bit closer so you can see what I'm writing on my whiteboard here so I can get it right through to you. So we're going with practice. Now people tell me, Ian, you make things look so easy. All right, maybe I do, but that's because I've done a lot of, up here, I've done a lot of practicing. Now with practice, you, you're you gonna do landscapes, seascapes for starters. So, so practice trees, clouds. Clouds are the most simplest things to look at in the sky, but can be the most hardest thing to achieve. So these things you've got to practice. And anything else like reflections, um, wa uh, water, yeah, like water, uh, trees and shrubs, whatever elements you want to use in a painting is what you need to practice, okay? Practice elements and fine tune them. People don't become great overnight. It takes a lot of effort, studying and practicing, okay? Watching videos like this is your studying and going out on your paper and canvas at home is your practicing, okay? Like Bruce Lee, he was a great at martial art. I can use this as an example. He was probably the best, the greatest of martial arts, the things that he achieved. Now, he didn't just go to karate school or whatever it was, learn the first belt, okay, I've got that, I wanna quickly jump onto the next one now. No, what he done, he learned the first belt or the first stand or the first degree, then what he done is go, okay, I've learned that, now I wanna master it, so then he mastered it. I'm not telling you you gotta master everything, but you put that extra effort in before you move on. And then he did the next procedure and he mastered it, and that's why he became such a master in his crafts and arts of what he did, does. And there are a lot of artists out there that are really, really great at what they do. And I guarantee you, with their practicing and whatever they were doing and their natural abilities, they didn't only get to that level, they wanted to master it, all right? And it'll come out that easy. And then when people watch you paint, they'll go, my God, you make that look easy. It's just because you put more effort into it. I'm not saying I've mastered everything just because people say mine look, make, I make it look like it's easy. But I've put a lot of practice in my stuff, okay? Um, so that's something to put under your hat and remember as well. You can also remember this. If you're telling me or you're telling somebody in a post, um, yeah, I did this, but it just turned into muck. I just did a painting, but it turned into muck. Or I had to paint over it. That's telling yourself, remember this, that's telling yourself, hey, do some more practicing, will you? In my days of painting, when I was learning and learning, I was learning things and I'm painting them and then after a couple of paintings, I'm like, I'm just not getting this. You know, and I was turning my paintings into muck. We're all guilty of it. Too right we are. And we all do it. So that's just a, like a, someone knocking you on the head and going, hey, get up and practice some more, you, and so your work won't look like muck or snot, as I call it, all right? So... That's something else you can remember. Something else a lot of people are asking me is what are those brushes you're using for blending your clouds? Where do you get those brushes from? What are those brushes? Um, well, I'm gonna show you the two different types of brushes that are out there. You can either get brushes from your Home Depot slash hardware store, you know, where you can go and buy the paint for your house and brushes and rollers to paint the bedroom and ceilings and walls and cut in. You can go to a place like that or you can go to your art shop, okay, where you can buy your canvases and um, drawing products and paints and brushes and knives and everything like that. So I wanna show you down here the difference between brushes. So these ones here are just two inch brushes from the hardware store, okay? Just two inch brushes. They're, they're all different ones that I use for blending, okay? And what's this one here? Well, that one is what you, that's a two inch brush as well. It's probably a three inch brush or two and a half. I'd say two and a half. But that's the sort of one you might find in your art shop, okay? And people can use these and some people can't. I don't use them very much, but that's because I have my own way of painting. Now, when I say a two inch brush, if you're looking at my videos and go, all right, he said a two inch brush, you found this one at the art store, it's not gonna work for you. And you wanna know why? I'll tell you why. The way I blend, this is gonna scratch it up. And this surface area is very thin compared to that surface area there. Look at the thickness of that, all right? And this is not as scratchy 
as this here. Now, to me, people ask, is it synthetic, real natural fibers or nylon? I don't know and I don't really care because so long as the edge is soft, it's gonna work for me whether it's nylon, synthetic or natural, all right? Now, when you go to the hardware store to buy these brushes, they also have smaller half inch, one and a half inch, two, two and a half, threes and so on. And even these ones from the art shops, they've got one inches or 25, 2.5 mil, whatever. Also, while you're watching this video, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, click that little icon on my head in the bottom right hand corner there and subscribe. When you subscribe, click the little bell. That way you'll get notified when I'm uploading a video or a premiere video, you'll be notified when that's going to happen, all right? And there's links in the description below for my art for sale. If you wanna buy any of my tutorial paintings, they're all for sale, and there's a link that'll take you to my Facebook album art for sale page and you're more than welcome to message me and buy a painting from there and they're all done through PayPal payments and they are all 55 US dollars which includes the postage and handling okay uh, there's a link for my Facebook page those people who might want to add me on Facebook and we can follow each other you can message me and ask me a question and when I'm available I can um, answer it sometimes I'm there sometimes I'm not so it might take uh, a while to get a response or you might get a response straight away and sometimes I've got too many to answer I'll just give the thumbs up meaning I've acknowledged you and I've read it okay um, there's also a link for my video catalog which I have on YouTube on my channel here there's over 200 videos and a lot of you new subscribers might not realize how much videos I have in my library there so click on that link and it'll just show you all the different subjects that I teach in my channel here and there's also a link for my patreon page some people like to support us um, creators here on a patreon platform so you're more than welcome to support my content on that platform as well okay and it all costs you nothing except for the patreon if you opt to support our content with a whether it's a dollar five dollars whatever how much you want to pledge a month okay but all the rest is for free and it costs you nothing to subscribe to the youtube channel and yeah and i love doing this for you people as well okay and i want to thank everybody for following me and support we're, we're hitting the well we're past the fifty-five thousand subscriber mark which is great uh, so we're hitting 60. thank you everybody for getting me there thank you very much well just remember everything you do is your way. I show you how to paint, other people show you how to paint. I'm showing you how I blend, how I paint, how I mix. That's just my way. You can learn my way and do my way only or many different ways, but just learn the actual principle and the procedures behind these things between me and other creators out there that's showing you different ways to do things all right. Uh, so yeah, if we're painting a painting, it doesn't mean yours has to look like that. You change them up a bit. You can even change the colours a bit as well. Art, you know, you can do all sorts of things with art. You're allowed to change it, all right? So don't be frightened of that. What else can I, you know? And just yeah, take your time. You know, you got there's a ladder. Let's say a ladder to the top of the roof or to success of being a great artist. You start, you can see that, you start at the bottom run and climb all the way up. And in between every run, you're learning and practicing. Okay? And by the time you get up to this level, you know, you can probably do things and make it look easy to people that are down on this level. Okay? Um, don't try and just jump all the way up there in one big jump because you're going to miss out on all this learning and practicing and you're going to get to people that are already up there and you're going to think god you make it look so easy mine just looks like muck that's because you didn't take time climbing this ladder and learning and practicing that's all it takes okay and don't try and think you've got to rush a painting and get it done if it's bothering you or something's on your mind just stop put it down do whatever in life and start over again because the good thing about a painting is that's going to hang on the wall for the end of etern until the end of eternity. It'll outlive you, me, and everybody else. Okay, so why cut a few corners in time when it's going to be there forever? Okay, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to my channel here. And if you like what I've done today, tell your friends. If you don't, tell everybody, all right? All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on you.